How do Iron Man's repulsor beams work? Let's shoot this answer down right away. Science behind Iron Man. So, here it is. I had some trouble deciding what episode to do this week if anyone who didn't know was watching. So, I decided to host a Twitter poll. The options were a Green Lantern follow-up video, a video on Iron Man, or a video on Daredevil. Don't worry about the losers, by the way. Those videos will still come at some point. Anyway, you can probably guess which one won at this point. If you can't, well, I'm not sure how you're watching this right now. But let's cut to the chase already. We're going to be taking a quick look at Iron Man's repulsor rays. Let's try and get the first question off the table here. What is a repulsor ray? Contrary to the name, Iron Man's repulsor rays are really just lasers. And the mechanisms in the Iron Man suit that make them are called repulsor beams, which is another comic book word for laser makers. But what exactly is a laser? I'm sure a lot of you have either seen or used a laser pointer. That doesn't really fit the Iron Man suit's criteria, does it? I mean, you use it to point on walls so your cat will be less bored around the house, not to take down some massive terrorist organization. Where's the line drawn? Well, to know that, we have to define what a laser is and how it works. Let's take a closer look at the science of lasers, shall we? So, first off, what is a laser? Those who don't really look into this kind of thing would just think, hot beam of light, right? Well, that's not entirely wrong, but it's way more complex. A laser is more like a chain of light emitting atoms. That is all so hot. Okay, let me explain it more logically. So, lasers are actually acronyms, that acronym standing for Amplification by Stimulated Emission of Radiation. In understandable English, that basically says, these things exert energy by radiating it. That in itself isn't the best definition I could come up with, I'm sure, but that's what this video is for. So let's get back on the main train and take a look at how lasers are made. The process of creating a laser beam begins when atoms are exposed to electrical currents, or other lasers for that matter. That's how a laser shoots in a chosen direction, actually. The atoms in front of the already existing laser get exposed to it and carry on that chain that I was talking about earlier. But how do atoms do this? Well, when atoms are exposed to one of those two methods, they absorb the energy and become what we call excited. When an atom becomes excited, the electrons then circle the atom's nucleus also become excited, basically meaning they start going faster around the nucleus, producing and exposing themselves to a higher concentration of energy. That energy, however, will run its course, and the electrons will slow down. But the energy has left those electrons emitting what are called photons. These photons are sort of like little concentrations of energy that now are attached to the atoms, and move around in coherence with other nearby photons. What I mean by this is that now, the chain of a laser has been created and the links of that chain are the photons. And what I mean by that they move in coherence with each other, is that they move in the same direction at the same rate. These coherent photons will emit light particles, and this is why we even see lasers. So that's a quick little breakdown of how lasers are made, what they are, and why we see them. There's just one question now. Why are Iron Man's repulsor rays so different from actual lasers? Just look. The repulsor rays are huge, they cause intense friction upon impact, and can even kill people if concentrated enough. Like we said before, most lasers can do maybe a small fraction of the things that repulsor rays can do. What makes them different? Well, the answer is a bit foggy. From what I've seen, it's all about the intensity of the laser. See, the way a laser device works in most cases, is that the laser is shot out by being reflected across a well, a reflective surface. It looks like Iron Man's gauntlets work in a similar fashion, at least looking at this pretty awesome Iron Man gauntlet that I just have so happen to have around. <laughs> anyway, so what does this have to do with making repulsor rays? Well, it depends on the reflective surface. Think of it pretty much like sun rays coming through a magnifying glass. The higher the magnification is, the more powerful the resulting laser beam will be. With the right reflection, these lasers can become as powerful as repulsor rays. As for the size, well, that one's a bit more logical. The size of a laser depends on the reflective surface. Lasers like the ones that the Hulkbuster suit from Age of Ultron uses are relatively logical. The bigger the laser maker, the bigger the beam. The beams that come from Iron Man's gauntlets, however, do seem a bit big for the suit. So, the big question. Are repulsor rays possible? Some might say there's an iron wall in front of that answer. I disagree. Fly on over to this video. I recommend you guys check it out. Let me know what you think.